Hi, I'm Lisa Savano. You're watching Rob Report TV. Today we're at the 60th annual Pebble Beach Concorde Elegance on the Concept Lawn, taking a look at some of tomorrow's classics. And next, we'll visit the main Concorde Lawn and see some perfectly restored classics of yesteryear. Standing amongst the Duesenbergs, let's listen as Robert Ross, automotive editor, speaks with Randy Ema, restoration expert of this classic design of the 20s and 30s. It's a doozy. Well, certainly the day everyone's been waiting for, Sunday of the uh, Concorde de Elegance at Pebble Beach, and I'm standing here with Randy Ema. Randy, it's great to see you, and you are custodian of the history of this mark. Clearly, a lot of people appreciate and love these cars. It's important to have that database, the history, the original drawings, literally the nuts and bolts that authenticate the cars in addition to the provenance, which is so important in tracing them to their origin. But, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be able to acquire almost everything that is left of the factory and the family materials. So with that, we can pretty well document every nut and bolt, every piece of the history, every, every direction every ownership, every, you know, the provenance back to the factory uh, in many cases. So it makes a wonderful piece of history. Uh, one thing nice about Duesenbergs is, number one, they were truly such a significant automobile when they were new. Uh, nothing else was comparable as far as power and speed and roadability. Uh, but the fascinating part of it is, that I'm a social historian, is the, the you know, the provenance that goes with each car. So the people in the cars. It's right, not just right, about machines, right. it's, about, it's about ownership history and, and the uh, the, 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 the social aspects that sure. underpin the automobiles. Every one of them has a fascinating story to tell in itself, not just, you know, the piece of machinery, but also its history. So. And Randy, how many are there? When you talk about well, numbers, uh, how, they, they how built many were made? 481 cars, there's 378 existing today. So oh, Heavens, that's quite a... Know, uh, we're missing only 40. There's 40. We have no idea what happened to them, where they went, but for the majority of the cars, the, the rest of those, 60 some odd cars that are missing. Uh, we know exactly when they were scrapped, how they were scrapped, where their pieces went, what pieces went where. Uh, what great detective work. And uh, in, in speaking of detective work, um, out of those cars, how many do you imagine you've actually laid eyes on? All but four. How is this even possible? Yeah, well, I'm probably the only person alive that ever did that, but I've seen all but four of them. So. Good heavens, uh, if, you were an a... if you were an ornithologist, <laughs> you'd have seen everything but the dodo bird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I keep a file on every car built by the factory, and that takes up 16 legal-sized filing cabinet drawers, so, you know, thousands and thousands of photographs. So the cars, the four I haven't seen, I know exactly what they look like, where they are, who owns them. Uh, just haven't gotten around to seeing those last four. So. What a great story. Would you say the fraternity of, uh, of Duesenberg owners is a pretty friendly one? Are they a, a tight group? Well, or? you know, today they have gotten to the value situation that they're back in their Fortune 500, Forbes 400 type of ownership. So mm -hmm. it's, it's changing. Uh, there are very few customers that actually drive them anymore. Quite often they're show queens or in collections. And, and that's fine. I'm glad to see them preserved. You know. That's my main goal, is to see them preserved, see history survive. History survive as a representation of what it was when it was new, as and it survives to today. Well, obviously you're doing a remarkable job keeping the mark not only alive, but keeping it uh, absolutely meticulously documented. And that's, uh, that's so important in the world of collector cars. And uh, Duesenberg is very fortunate to have you as its, uh, its main you. custodian. Thank you. It's been a hobby of mine for 40 years. I greatly enjoy it, still enjoy it today. So Well, best of luck in the future. Uh, Thank you. Continuing to restore them and uh, passing on the tradition too. And hopefully there's some young guys out there who are going to love Duesenbergs as much as you do. Standing in front of what is truly one of the most exquisite cars here. We're standing in front of your 1930 Duesenberg J with a unique Graber body. This is a Swiss body, not only a unique car, but very special in many other ways. What can you tell us about it? Well, the car started life uh, as a uh, town car, which implies a covered rear section where passengers sit with an open front. And it was delivered to New York City, and uh, the woman drove it for a few years and then moved to Paris and obviously just found that a car that big didn't maneuver very well on the Parisian streets. So she sold it back to the distributor, the Parisian distributor for Duesenberg. And the, the distributor 
ended up sending the car to Switzerland to have this body on it. And his, his charge to the coach builder was to build a sports car. And so what they did was essentially build this body almost all in aluminum. The only thing that's steel is the center section. And the body in characteristic French form was lowered over the chassis. They also used all European gauges in the car. So they turned it into what almost looked like and probably felt like a, uh, a sports car. It has a feature of uh, European shock absorbers which are adjustable from inside the car. So if you were driving around the city, you'd set the shock absorbers soft so it's a nice, easy ride. Fantastic. If you were trying to go fast on a mountain road, you'd crank them the other way and the car would perform entirely differently. And this would go fast. This was a real, uh, this was a real road racer for the oh, time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These cars would do an easy 105 miles an hour. Well, unlike a lot of collectors, you actually believe in driving your car. So not only do you have all these best of shows to your credit, but you've got cars that have been able to uh, be enjoyed on the road. What, uh, what, is this, uh, what is this car like to drive? Well, it's an old car. Uh huh. <laughs> and an old car, no matter how well restored it is, it still feels like an old car. Uh, partially because I think most modern cars mm -hmm. are so good and so comfortable and so convenient that it accentuates the age of the older cars. And, but it is, it's, it's actually lovely. It drives very fast, it's very able, its steering is relatively light, um, and uh, it's a pleasure. Well, Sam, this is a great pleasure to see this car. Thank you for bringing it out and sharing it with everyone, and uh, obviously best of luck at the show and uh, in your future endeavors, and we look forward to, uh, so to seeing more. Thanks for joining Rob Report at the 60th annual Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance.